Today we're going to install a foil temp sensor on the 93 Miata. So for an oil temperature gauge, I got this Max Toe uh, gauge <laughs> that says boost, but uh, trust me, it's oil temperature. Anyway, it is different than both this AEM uh, air fuel gauge and the Sun Pro boost gauge. So I didn't really want to like modify, make a new one of these with three gauges in it. Uh, because they're all going to be different. But what I think I'm going to end up doing is mounting it right in here and cutting this out so it can be as low as possible. So it hopefully only covers, I don't know, like up to 20 miles an hour or something. To take this piece off, there's four screws that stick it from the bottom. Mine doesn't have that, so it literally just pops apart. All right, and underneath that, not only is it disgusting, but there is a screw hole which is gonna get in the way of me countersinking that uh, gauge. So I have to take that screw out and see how wobbly this all gets. Damn, unfortunately it gets uh, pretty wobbly. If it sits on top of all of this, it really only blocks up to 15 miles per hour and that warning light, I am not even sure what that is. If anyone knows what that light is, uh, let me know in the comments. <laughs> Yeah, I think I still want to mount it up here, even though it's not going to be quite as low as I once thought it would be. And if it was mounted on top of this plastic, yeah, it covers, I can't read the 20. So I will cut this out, mount it as low as possible. So you guys are watching, uh, you're watching the learning experience happen right now. Kind of have no idea what my plan is. I'm just going to wing it and hope for the best. Honestly, it fits in this hole better than I thought, and then all the wires can just run out behind it, behind it and in between this uh, hood, and that won't look too bad. Right in there. Couldn't find any tape, so I'm using a pencil. So it looks like I can just cut out this chunk right here. The gauge will fit in a little bit lower than if it sat on top of the plastic. And then I will have to find a way to mount the gauge. The old cut sucked, but the new one looks pretty good. <laughs> So now that I found a happy home for it, it's far to the right. From where I'm seated, it covers just the 50 mile per hour mark, not too much. And like I said, just that one warning light right back there. So now we'll run the wires. Fantastic. So down underneath your steering wheel, your car probably has two screws, one on this side, one on that side. Again. <laughs> Mine doesn't have one of them because I've had this panel off eight million times already. And at one point, broke this whole tab off. For the power wire, we can just start by running it from, you know, your foot well up through this hole. But the wire that goes through the sensor has such a big end on the sensor, we're actually going to have to start this one in the engine bay. Run it somewhere through the firewall, through the uh, transmission tunnel, somewhere into the foot well, and then from the foot well up to the gauge. Conveniently, for me, at least, I already have a hole behind the passenger's carpet that is sealed with some duct tape. And that is from my intercooler sprayer that used CO2. And I also have a wire pushed through the firewall as like a fish tape wire. So if I had to do any more wiring, I left that in there. Look at that. Perfect hole already run for me. <laughs> Luckily for me, this cable is very long and Miatas are very small. So I have plenty of cable to run this up to the uh, 
oil filter sandwich plate. So after loosely fitting the cable uh, that goes to the sensor into the gauge, running it through that footwell, crossover into this footwell, into that footwell, I still have plenty of room to work with. So I will uh, seal up that hole with something a little bit later once I get this side uh, figured out because I'd rather have the spool of wire that's left over you know in here somewhere than hanging under the car over here. So you'll notice that that hole doesn't have a grommet or anything um, in it and you don't want this wire sliding in and out. I mean you don't want an open hole to the outside in your car but you also don't want the wire rubbing in and out and getting cut. So once the wire is completely routed how you want it you can take it kind of mark your spot wrap it in a bunch of electrical tape until it's the size of the hole and then jam that through the hole it will seal the hole and it will protect the wire from being ripped or being cut There's your grommet. All right, as we as we move on to wiring this gauge, there is a fuse panel. So we're looking for things that are key on power, and unfortunately, not a single one of these are labeled. And I don't happen to have a multimeter or a test light handy in my garage anymore. So we'll have to find a new way to test that, and. I think the easiest way to do that is just going to be turning the car on and off while an LED or something is hooked up to each fuse. Or going on the internet and looking up what fuse is what on this specific car. And what I've purchased to hook up to this is easiest circuit adder. Um, so you plug this in where your existing fuse is. Take the existing fuse and plug it in on this side. And then this uh, top row shares a power lead. It goes through another fuse that you can pull out and you can hook up your gauge or whatever into this end. According to the manual that came with the gauge, this red wire is going to be a constant, a constant 12 volts. The white one is going to be your ignition wire, key on power. Uh, orange is the dimmer, which would be like when you turn your lights on, and black is ground. Now I can't tell in this gauge would need constant power. It doesn't look like there's any fancy settings like that. I'm not going to change the color or anything. I'm fine with it being green, but it is extremely bright. So I'm going to have the dimmer hooked up constantly because it is it's crazy bright. So I'm going to take all three of these. I mean, I'm going to cut them shorter. But I'm going to tie them together into a quick disconnect, a little spade terminal, and I'll put a ring terminal on the ground. But with this having a spade, I'm going to cut the end off of this guy, put the mating spade connector, that way I can disconnect this separate, pulling this entire brick out. So I have this new gauge wired into female quick disconnect, all three of the power wires for the gauge, into the male end and I didn't use a ring terminal I used a fork for the ground so hopefully I can find a ground nearby. The fuse that I ended up using was this one 15 amp it is the radio and cigarette lighter now I just need to find a real spot for this ground uh, I just had it jammed up here just to poke around on this fuse block and find a fuse uh, that was key on power is a ground. I may as well pull one of these screws out and sandwich my terminal in between the plastic and the metal. All right, now it's time to run the wire, make sure it's not gonna get in the way of anything. And route the sensor wire somewhere as well. Make sure that's not gonna be in the way. The power wire there. I looped up and over. I taped it to the bracket so it wouldn't fall. 
ended up taping and coiling the wire right here so it won't be able to fall past where the dashboard goes. And then the sensor wire is this one and I wound it up, zip tied it, and then used this existing reusable zip tie, added it to the bundle so it can't go anywhere. And I left enough wire on this end so the gauge can easily be plugged in and unplugged. All right, now it's time to actually mount the gauge. I'm not still entirely sure how I'm gonna do it, but I have an idea. I'm also gonna lay down some sticky back foam right here uh, where the gauge is gonna sit against to keep it from ever making that noise. And I'll have plenty of room so that this gauge can come on and off easy. I can turn it around, unplug it if I have to ever. There you have it. That is how to install a gauge. I mean, you probably already knew how to install a gauge, but that is how I installed my gauge. To redo these zip ties, if this wasn't here, that'd be fantastic. But I need to go buy longer zip ties, so for the, uh, for the next day or two until I get around to doing that, it's going to have to be good enough. As always, guys, if I did something really stupid, let me know. Uh, I'm sure I did. Otherwise, happy modding, take care. So I've been using this gauge for about two weeks and it is just way too bright, especially at night. It's crazy bright. So my plan here, just take a piece of window tint that's pretty dark and tint this lens. And hopefully it'll be less blinding at night. Once I peel that protective layer off, we'll have a, uh, we'll have a good looking gauge. So here is the finished project about I don't know, eight months after I made the original video. I realized I never showed how bright it was with that window tint on, and I just had never published a video, so easy for me to add another piece. So with that window tint, I mean, it's still pretty bright, but it is way less bright than without it. And with that, that's the real end of the video. I know I'm not done messing with this gauge yet. Uh, that window tint needs to be replaced again and maybe just cleaned better so it doesn't bubble as quick, but whatever. Once again, good luck with your modding and have a good day.